Keep reading, verse seven, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he's taken out of the way, and then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. See, the Antichrist is preceded by this wholesale departure from truth and the wholesale removal of God. In fact, I just read a a piece that's really good. It says that God is now weightless. It used to be God exerted weight on everything in life. People felt the weight of God. Even unsaved people, you know, didn't want to offend God. And now God is weightless. But he became weightless in the church first. He, he doesn't, he, it isn't like people feel the need to hear his voice. He's weightless. He's inert. He is abandoned in many people's lives. They're practicing atheists. They can make it for weeks and months without the Lord, his word, his people. It's amazing what goes as Christendom today that is ungodly. But look at verse 9 of 2 Thessalonians 2. First, truth's abandoned, then God's abandoned. And now look what happens in verse nine. Satan amazes the world. I mean, this is the moment everybody's been waiting for. They've been watching the movies about it. I mean, uh, all the comic books when I was little are now movies. And, and everybody's just getting conditioned for someone is gonna show up that has supernatural power and it's not gonna be inside of a theater and everybody can't wait for that to happen. And here it is. And it says in verse nine, the coming of the lawless one is according to the workings of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish. By the way, this guy can call down fire from heaven. I mean, who needs precise guided munitions and hypersonic uh, you know, missiles when you can just bring down fire from heaven, from the sky? It's like calling down 30,000 degrees centigrade lightning and have it incinerate something. That's what Satan has the power to do. You see it in Job. He brought the tornado through that wiped out the homes. He brought the fire that came through. He, He moved the armies. Satan is the most powerful being. He's more powerful than the Starship Enterprise. You know, I mean, he is very powerful. And he is the highest power of any created being. Even Michael doesn't play around with Satan. He just says, the Lord will take care of you. Michael, the archangel, knows how powerful Satan is. Now he gets to show his lying wonders and all unrighteous deception. But look how verse 10 ends. Among those who perish, look at this, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. The only way someone gets saved, it's not if you give them the right track, it's not if you pray with them the right time, if they repeat it exactly after you. That isn't salvation. Salvation is receiving from God on the inside a love for the truth. That's why everybody that says, Lord, Lord, is saved. But those that do as will, why? Because they love the truth. And they love the author of truth and they love the word of truth and they receive the word of truth that is the engrafted word that saved their soul. And that's why many in the, in the public church will say, Lord, we were there, we were working. And he says, yeah, yeah, but you never received a love of the truth. You're not saved. And those who don't receive the love of the truth are not saved. And Satan amazes all them. Because they don't know truth, they don't have any moorings, they don't have any foundations, they just go with the flow, and he's the flow. So look what happens in verse 11. It actually gets worse. Truth's abandoned, God's abandoned, Satan amazes the world, and so what does God do? He adds to the mix. God sends strong delusion on people who are truth neglectors. In other words, he says, you've been neglecting the truth so long, I'm gonna gonna send strong delusion. I'm going to infect you with a malicious virus that you're gonna love error. And strong delusion. Verse 11, and for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Born-again people love the truth and have no pleasure in unrighteousness. Unsaved people don't, they neglect, they don't have hunger, they don't love the truth, and they have pleasure in unrighteousness. And God sends them strong delusion. 